Hello School of DevOps family and welcome to 2020. This is my first video for the year and definitely watch it till the end because this video is all about you. You being in the center, you driving the direction in which we create the courses and you know um, plan out the strategy. All right, so I just said you being in the center, so let me make some space for you. Yeah, now I have some space for you being in the center. So this video, I'm gonna divide into five different things. One is the updates for 2019, how we are doing and how well we did or how bad we did. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk about the 2020 outlook from the DevOps point of view. That's sort of useful for you to get insights into what to expect in 2020 from the DevOps world and what are the skills which are important. After that, I'm gonna talk about my professional goals and that's where you start being the center stage, taking the center stage. And because the professional goals are aligned with what you want and what you, you know, the direction in which uh, you want things to happen, which courses, which topics and stuff like that. Uh, I'm also going to talk about um, you know, how you can contribute to School of DevOps and in which channels uh, you could possibly do that. And uh, then I am also going to talk about what's coming for 2020, what do you expect, um, not the exact topics, but what do you expect in terms of uh, what I've planned as my strategies and uh, the kind of content that you can, you know, expect for 2020. Now, let's start with 2019 recap. And 2019 has truly been the year of growth, that is what I would say. Um, and I'll just talk about some numbers here. So uh, on Udemy, where I publish my online courses, uh, we've already crossed 28,000 students mark with uh, close to 40,000 enrollments. What that means is um, some of the students, some of you have all enrolled for more than one courses and that's just fantastic number to begin with. And this is without uh, spending any time on doing marketing. It's just content which is driving this enrollments. And uh, I really want to thank you for enrolling my courses uh, on multiple channels. I just talked about Udemy, but there are multiple channels on which these courses get published, which include uh, Pact, which is my, I have written a book with Pact and they also, you know, are promoting the course courses that I have through multiple channels, which also includes Safari books online by O'Reilly. Uh, so you can get those courses from O'Reilly as well. Um, you know, so th these are some of the courses or most of these courses are also available on our own platform, which has been uh, the school of DevOps.net, which is changing now, by the way. Um, and then uh, there are a few more platforms that I publish on. And uh, if I add up all these numbers, because I have a very clear visibility into what Udemy does and uh, the platform that we manage. Uh, so Udemy is about 28,000. Uh, our own platform is close to 4,500. And uh, then, you know, um, it gets sold well, um, you know, it got sold well on all the platforms as well. So if I add up um, all of those numbers, uh, even on a conservative note, I would say we are a strong uh, 45,000 plus family. And uh, if I add YouTube numbers, some of you have subscribed on uh, my YouTube channel as well. So I really want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for, for bottom of my heart for being part of this School of DevOps family, which is definitely growing. Uh, two significant things that happened, one on the professional front was I got an opportunity to work with Linux Foundation. Uh, if you're not aware of Linux Foundation, they are the leaders in the open source and the DevOps world now, because if you've heard of, you must have heard of Kubernetes at least, or Prometheus or uh, Jenkins, all of these are now officially the products which are driven by Linux Foundation through various uh, different, um, you know, um, foundations like CNCF, Cloud Native, which is Cloud Native Compute Foundation, which owns Kubernetes, Prometheus, and a lot of other projects which are interesting. Uh, that is CD Foundation, which they formed this year. And my course is now sort of an official offering of the CD Foundation. It's one of, one of that is on continuous integration and delivery. Um, and the second one is just the introduction to SRE and DevOps. The second, which is introduction to SRE and DevOps, has been published on edX. Uh, 
you know that was a big platform for me this year to get a lot of visibility because you know in fact i'm getting a lot of enrollments uh, after my course was published on edx even though the course itself is free so i definitely recommend you to go and check out the course on edx and maybe enroll and you know get you know if you are getting started with devops and sre that's definitely a great course for you so again um we are definitely growing uh, the school of devops family is growing and my personal side me and my wife have been blessed with twin boys this year and that's just an amazing thing that has happened in our lives uh, and you know we definitely definitely it's a great feeling um you know uh, i can't really explain that uh, with, with through words really uh, so it's been a fantastic uh, fantastic year for me on the professional as well as on the you know on the personal side uh, that's about 2019 uh, recap let's talk about the 2020 overview and outlook for the 2020 i love 2020 because um, in the devops world things have become really really simplified and standardized now if you have been part of the devops um, industry and the domain and the world um, you might have seen the there was like some period in between like about there was between i would say 2011 to 2015 16 uh there was a lot of chaos there, you know there was a lot of noise uh, about uh, what is devops everybody was promoting you know this is what my devops every single vendor was saying hey if you use my tool uh, you are doing the devops if not really missing out and so on right so that that is over now and there are not a lot of noise there are not a lot of things to consider so now in 2020 you can actually go and look at oh if you want to get started with devops and implement it there's just x y and z that you think that you can do and you can get started with that and when i say x y and z what does that mean um one number one is containers so in um in 2020 containers has have already become pretty much like a standard that you build everything on top of and when i talk about containers it's mainly docker and kubernetes kubernetes is in the bold because kubernetes from here on becomes a platform on which you do everything else right from to begin with just deploy your applications that's definitely something that people have already started doing but it's not just about deploying your application with high availability reliability that's definitely there and that's where people have started implementing with kubernetes uh, but it goes beyond that kubernetes truly becomes the platform just like virtualization and cloud has become a platform on which we build everything else on top of that now we have this new platform called as kubernetes on top of which you do a lot of different things what of what does that mean uh, if you look at you know uh, ci cd jenkins is the big thing there and jenkins is here to stay and there have been a lot of interesting projects around how do you port your ci cd platform onto kubernetes itself to leverage uh, the advantage of scale and you know you don't have to worry about scaling jenkins then the ci cd platform itself uh, becomes scalable so there have been some projects such as um, i would say there's a new project called as tecton uh, which is very new project which is also part of the cd foundation that i spoke about um there are few other like jenkins x is another project i can name which is specifically created for creating native ci cd on kubernetes that's just one part the ci and cd part uh you can also you will also see service mesh evolving this year um because once you start deploying your application to kubernetes that's when you realize hey this is not enough uh there are a lot of features that you may want to uh implement which are useful and they mainly these are the features which offload the developer's job and put it on the infrastructure side things like you know uh doing traffic routing uh you know um, doing releases in in a nicer way deploying canary canary uh doing traffic shaping uh taking care of mutual tls the security part um you know and then there are a lot of interesting features that the service mesh industry offers and that's where you have you can hear about tools such as istio or linkerd istio being the most prominent name in that world so 2020 the containers is standardized 
that becomes a platform, you deploy your application, you add service mesh, you do CI CD, everything starts going to the containers, on the containers world rather. That's one big thing. CI CD wise, it's very simple, it's the Jenkins and there is another tool called as Spinnaker, which you will hear a lot about. It's mainly a multi-cloud deployment tool. Very interesting tool, definitely go and check out uh, how it works and you know, it can actually uh, automate the complete release process for you. It's just amazing tool uh, to definitely consider and look at. And you have other things like GitOps and Git is already there, which is also, you know, something that uh, becomes like a, it's something that you can take for granted. Uh, infrastructure as a code size, the automation side, uh, Ansible is what I would say has, you know, taken over everything else uh, because, you know, um, you're uh, due to container implementation, now you don't have to worry about application configurations and so on. Uh, it's all done by containers. All you have to do, uh, all remains is your system configuration, network configuration, patching, managing network devices. And Ansible does a fantastic job there. It's a simple and powerful tool at the same time. So Ansible has become a standard in the infrastructure as a code configuration management world. The second tool, which is again important to know uh, for everyone uh, in the DevOps industry today is uh, Terraform. And um, after Kubernetes, I've seen some graphs where Terraform is the most another second popular tool, which is quite quickly emerging. Uh, it's a tool for cloud provisioning. It's a multi-cloud provisioning tool. So it gives you like one tool to talk to multiple clouds and provision the resources on it. Very useful tool has become very popular and Terraform has released a new version recently which is again, uh, uh, which has a lot of new improvements. So Terraform is a tool to look out for apart from Ansible in the infrastructure as a code world. Cloud wise, you know, AWS has been the most popular one but I see Azure and GCP also sort of so uh, upcoming as well. So if you're new in the world of DevOps and want to get started with something, it's definitely AWS, there is no doubt about it. But apart from that, if you're already implementing DevOps and if you are working in an organization which uses a specific cloud, understanding and knowing that you know the services that this that particular cloud offers at the basic services which include compute, databases, networking, storage, that's very, very important. Load balancing and auto scaling, yeah, that's very important. Another thing that you will start hearing a lot about this year is site reliability engineering, also called as SRE. In fact, there's been a lot of effort to, you know, uh, to actually, you know, uh, bring, uh, you know, reduce the chaos in the DevOps world because DevOps means a lot of things for a lot of people. But the people who actually implement DevOps, what we call as DevOps engineers, uh, there's been effort to name them as SRE. I have some opinions about it. I'll probably create a different video and write some uh, blog post about it. But um, SRE is something that you'll hear a lot about this year. And Google has recently released a course and a workshop and a series on SRE practices, including what is SLA, SLOs, SLAs, and SLIs and stuff like that. Uh, performance, uh, the you know, and there are many different practices which are uh, which are there. You should talk about, uh, which you should definitely consider. So SRE is something that I would say is more like a specific implementation of DevOps. And um, it's if you're getting started with DevOps, don't worry about SRE practices, just get focused on DevOps. But if you are a DevOps engineer, and if you want to logically, you know, uh, if you are looking for logical progression, SRE practices is something that you should know about, definitely. It also needs uh, to think about designing your architecture, high performance, reliability, availability, all these non-functional requirement aspects of, you know, when you start implementing SRE. Now that's another thing, that's the outlook for 2020. Let's talk about the professional goals for 2020 for me and for the School of DevOps um, in general. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the focus is on what you want, focus is on you, what you want to learn, uh, what you want me to improve on, and what kind of content that you would want me to create. And I'm going to start taking that in those, in those inputs 
from you using some service and uh, you know you can always reach out to me through this channel or otherwise as well if you have any specific inputs now um, this year like always I have already begun my you know exercise on understanding the market uh, what's out there what are the changes and my question always is um, and that has not changed over the years is how can I create the best possible DevOps learning program a program using which anybody who has some systems and operational experience can be a proficient DevOps practitioner or an engineer and that's the question that you know I have been working on to solve and uh, you know the last year I started focusing a lot on creating the content which is relevant to uh, to all the aspects of DevOps which includes infrastructure as a code um, cloud includes the CD as well as uh, containers and uh, I have a bunch of courses and content. now that we are already almost getting close to a perfect program uh, what is missing are the fundamentals mainly the Linux and networking and those parts um, which everybody should know in depth and that's something I'm working on right now plus some observability tools or monitoring as you may call it so we're getting there in terms of content and what I and a bunch of uh, DevOps practitioners see as uh, relevant in the market. But what I want uh, to know is what you want to learn, what you think is relevant this year and what you think I need to improve on on the existing content. And I have sought a lot of feedback on my existing content and also I get Udemy feedbacks and uh, through other channels as well. And um, what I typically see is uh, people are able to understand the concepts pretty well they like that content and the course in general but uh, what what is lacking is probably the practice act activities projects maybe more labs and uh, fixing some existing labs which are not working mainly related to environment and code spaces that I started working on a few years ago and things like that right so that's what I my focus is going to be for the next couple of months to improve on the existing courses that includes bringing in more practice activities uh, maybe a few projects and uh, create some assignments around it um, and uh, you know just add a more depth in general to the existing courses and that's what I'm going to begin with here. Now what's coming into 2020 is more of personal interaction. So what I definitely want to do is reach out to you more often talk about uh, not only uh, what is happening in the DevOps world uh, and uh, I'm going to start some series on that as well as well as uh, just more videos in general about uh, the conceptual understanding of the technical topics um, also about what is behind the scene how do I create courses how much efforts go into it what is my approach how do I go about uh, doing each and every component that you see in my course and so on right so that course creation process behind the scene videos uh, tell me if you think that would be something that you would be interested in um, knowing about so I will definitely uh, would like to create those courses if there is enough interest on it and then uh, maybe you know in terms of reaching out more to you because I get keep getting a lot of questions but I am not dedicatedly answering those or dedicatedly not getting any time to do that uh, so I'm thinking of some webinars once in a month or some streaming um, you know sessions on Facebook or Google, YouTube live or something like that again let me know if that's something which interests you Course updates are definitely coming with practice activities, projects, use cases. That's definitely in the plans. Uh, another thing that I'm working on is um, integrating with some live cloud-based environments so that to improve the experience, learning experience, so that you don't have to, or some people struggle setting up the environment. And I created code spaces, but I, then I realized that code spaces itself needs a lot of maintenance and that's sort of difficult to maintain, especially with the tools that we were using initially at least, right? And that's also, again, needs some, you know, um, setup on your side in order to learn. So what I'm thinking about is using tools which are already available in the market and the platform such as Catacoda. And Catacoda, if you have not heard of or checked out, definitely go and look at it. They offer the cloud-based playground and scenarios. And I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but I would want to you know, use these new technologies and see if I can embed it and integrate it with my existing courses. And that's in the plan. 
uh, I already have a name for these cloud-based um, environments and I'm going to call it as Zerola. So say hola to Zerola. Zerola is mainly the name came from my idea about uh, these are going to be the zero setup lab environments. That's why I want to call it a zero law. Maybe if that works well and if you guys like it, um, in later on we might create a dedicated platform out of product which you know which is on the similar lines or which works better. Uh, a customized product maybe. So right now I'm just going to take Catacoda, customize it, embed it and see if that works. The new learning experience is coming especially if you are using my platform. Um, that is schoolofdevops.com or .net. Um, I am moving away. So far, I was using a platform called as Teachable, and mostly, and that is in progress right now in works. I'm going to move away from Teachable to another platform called as Thinkific. There are many reasons about why I'm uh, making that decision. I'll probably create another video to talk about it. Uh, but basically, it gives me an ability to add user reviews. That's social proof. Uh, more exercises it's you know um, it has a lot of interesting features to add more practice activities and uh, I can integrate it with my website and then you know there are a few other major reasons why I'm thinking of doing that uh, and then um, another thing that I'm going to start doing is keeping things simple so far I was running my platform plus I had courses on Udemy Udemy sells really well I have to promote a lot to on my platform as well so when I'm going to start promoting I already, always had that confusion oh which one I should should I promote uh, Udemy or my own platform I tended to promote my own platform but it lacks a little bit of features in terms of social proof mainly um, so you know it's so it's been so it's been confusing in terms of the strategy to promote the courses and this year I'm going to keep it simple if you want to buy a course one a one course you go to Udemy and my site is going to be dedicatedly a membership site where you get access to all the courses uh, for a monthly fee so monthly fee subscription this one time you go to Udemy so uh, that's the strategy that I'm coming up with so I'll probably talk about it in a different video and uh, the final thing that I want to talk about is it's about you again is I am going to start collaborating with more people and that's where you can possibly contribute as well. And what kind of collaborations you would possibly see is I have already started co-authoring some of the courses and you know uh, and a couple of my existing students is who I'm going to tie up, you know, collaborate and uh, co-author some of the courses with. Uh, there's one course that we are already talking about is on Azure DevOps because there's a lot of demand for Azure um, DevOps professionals. And then there is another um, that I'm co-authoring is on CKA, that is Kubernetes, Certified Kubernetes um, a you know, uh, administrator CKA certification. So I'm creating one course for that and another for Azure DevOps in, um, you know, and that's going to be a co-authored course. Um, there are many other ways you can contribute as well apart from just co-authoring and I'm definitely open to hear from you as well. Uh, one way to collaborate and I've done this in past is um, I need help, a lot of help creating the practice activities, uh, writing those lab guides. Um, creating the projects and solutions for it all this you know it takes a lot of effort and time and I cannot focus on everything at the same time for so many different courses so if you're interested in working on that and there are some revenue sharing models I have in mind for that as well so that's another um, way to collaborate uh, if you can translate my courses into different languages I'm definitely open to it and that's going to be a very straightforward revenue sharing model that I would be working on. And this includes not just the languages in uh, the Indian languages, which I'm thinking of as Hindi and maybe Tamil and Marathi. Uh, I, I come from Marasha, so I can speak Marathi as well. So uh, if there is a demand, yes. And then uh, international languages such as uh, Italian, um, Spanish, uh, Japanese, maybe Russian. So I'm open to any language and if you have proficiency in that language if you think you can translate the course we can start talking about that as well and then i'm just open for collaboration because this year i'm not gonna i have decided i don't want to do everything alone um i would rather want to collaborate with you guys make you successful uh, and the advantage that you get is the reach 
we already have achieved in the last few years. Uh, we have thousands of uh, students enrolled in part of the School of DevOps family. There's a trust which has been built and you can benefit from this. And uh, I personally believe that to be really successful, you have to and uh, make people, other people successful. And that's when you, you know, really it's, it's been satisfying for me to um, help a lot of people in their careers. And uh, that has been, you know, really, 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 really uh, touching when you see someone who says that, hey, uh, your courses or your trainings or working with you has helped me um, progress in my career. And that's just fantastic. The point I want to make is I'm open for collaborations. So feel free to reach out to me through any of the channels. And I'm going to add some links to this video where you can fill out some surveys and talk, uh, give me your feedback. Tell me what you want to learn. Uh, what you want me to improve on and, and if and if you are interested in collaboration maybe i'll have another survey for you as well okay this is where i stop talking and you start talking and i'm going to end this video with the promise to be here more often and come up with much more content than ever before so happy 2020 and i'll see you in another one